Hi, I'm Brent Johnson, and in a bit you're going to see a tour of the new keg pipe organ in the Church of the Little Flower here behind me in St. Louis. Um, if you missed our first video where we documented the installation of the instrument, you don't want to skip that. It's right up here, or there's a link down in the description. In that video, we documented the first five days of installation, ending with the installation of the last flue pipes. Now it's Monday, January 18th. Uh, the crew is packing up their tools. Most of them are headed home. Uh, they're only going to leave a few people behind to complete the finishing of the organ. Tuba pipes still need to be installed, so those are being unwrapped and brought up to their chamber first. Then it's time for an initial tuning of all the pipes before any tonal finishing happens. Zimbelstern is, of course, put together as well. Once an initial tuning has been done, then we can start with the process of tonally finishing each and every rank. Are you in the big room? We're in the big room. Okay. The installation went swimmingly and incredibly fast. We installed a 26 rank organ in four days due to my rather amazing crew that I have. Um, and now we're doing the tonal finishing. I'm doing that also with, with Christopher Soar, a, a, a local fine organ technician. Uh, it's going very well. Um, things are responding well to the room. The, the organ is very happy in the room. We voice pipes in the shop um, different ways depending on the stop. Strings are voiced as close to complete and finished as possible because they don't change as much in the room. Uh, flutes are done less so, um, but still more so than principles. Principles, we leave the most raw if we're going to leave something raw so we can really mold those to the room. I wasn't overly concerned with this room for because the great principal chorus is right out in the room on the balcony in the space. Um, so we brought those along a little further than we normally might have gone because I knew it was going to be safe. So what we're doing here on site is to fit these sounds to the room, and that is a lot of regulation, um, speech correction, blending the old with the new. That was done to a degree in the voice room, <coughs> but you can only really do that and know what it's going to do, how it's going to work when you're in the room and you have all the stops available to you at once. The tonal finisher at the keyboard communicates to the technician in the chamber by playing notes on the keyboard to communicate his desires for any individual note. They communicate musically.
mixture is a multi-rank stop, but it's voiced one pitch at a time, so the pipes you don't want to hear have to be taped off individually, so you're only hearing one note. It's unusual to have more than one person in the chamber working with the pipes as we see here. However, in this case, there's room for two people to be in the grate without being in each other's way too much, and it allowed for Nick Myers, who is fairly new to the process, to learn directly by watching Christopher Soar. The process of tonal finishing went on for several days. Uh, after the grate was finished, they moved on to the swell and the choir here where they're working on the harmonic flute. Yeah, that's what I'm working on right now. Try that. Working on this stop led to a small discovery of a problem in the chest that required the removal of the Schwimmer regulator. Some adjustment to the action was necessary, but everything was resolved and the pipe was speaking nicely very soon. After all the flues were done, it was time to put in the final reeds. We see here the choir clarinet about to go in. The reed pipes are frequently top heavy with a weak point of support at the bottom, so racks have to be installed that will tie the pipes into place keep them from falling over after a long time. So that's what has to happen next. At this point in the job, uh, just Charlie and Chris and Chuck Chauvin, the organist, are on site, so installing pipes requires a lot more legwork this time. Once the reed pipes were installed, they also required some regulation. Not much tonal finishing actually happened, just a little bit of adjusting volumes. The process went fairly quickly. This room, it's a round room. It's a challenging room for an organ builder, particularly because I wasn't impressed with the way the sound worked from the old organ and it's a concern because we can't really change the room very much. 
but when we arrived and the organ began to make sounds in its new location within this room, it is engaging the room extremely well, much better than I had hoped. Um, and the, the organ truly engulfs you, and due to its round form, when you walk around the room as the organ's being played, the organ moves. It might look like it's in front of you, but it may sound like it's behind you. No need for an antiphonal here. The sound comes from everywhere at certain locations of the room. Uh, it's very happy to make bass, and so it, that makes my job as a voice or furniture much easier because the room is working with me. It's going quite well. Um, I expect to be done earlier than normal, um, and uh, I'm look, really looking forward to this this organ being done. Um, it, it's, it already has turned into one of my favorites. A final tuning was all that was required, and then the organ would be done. Stairs and go through the organs. You can get a, a bird's eye view of how things look up inside. So you'll forgive the uh, tools uh, sitting around. The rule is you never ever take the tools away until the organ is really done and we're walking out of the building. One of the nicest staircases up into an organ that exists in the world. Okay, here we are at the, on the balcony at the back of the organ case. We're looking at the back wall of the choir division. We're going to have a peek in here. Uh, here we have the choir division. Um, it is six stops. Uh, Gemshorn, Dulciana, a Harmonic Flute, des Dash Concert Flute, Una Maris, um, Four Foot Principal, and Clarinet. The Gemshorn has a 16-foot extension at my back made in Haskell bases, and this is a nice compact little division. It has an extra set of side shades that uh, let sound out toward the choir loft directly, which has been remarkably successful in this particular organ. All right, we're going to back out here, close this door. Coming into the choir here, on the back of the choir box, you can see a couple of things. Our Zimbel Stern is five Malmar handbells. It's a Der Zimbel Stern built by Gary Fox in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. You have the ability to control volume, speed, and a, and a delay when you turn it on um, from that. And it plays the five Malmar handbells in, uh, in a sequence, a very long sequence. It's a, it's a lovely thing. If you're going to have a Zimbel Stern, I highly recommend it. In this box contains the control system for this section of the organ. This box takes the fiber optic signal from the console and uh, distrib it comes in here and it distributes it through these output driver cards which turns it into organ cables which then run the magnets. Uh, has its own dedicated power. There's another box like this in uh, for the swell, pedal, and tuba division. And we do that in order to um, keep chest cables short. Whenever you're building an organ with wires in it, uh, an electric action instrument of any kind, you have to be careful of lightning damage and, and vulnerability, so we do our best to um, uh, reduce our exposure, as they say in the insurance business. And to do that, we try to keep the chest cable short, which means we have m more than one of these panels usually in order to, uh, to keep those cables short for that reason. Doing our best to make sure that we have a long-lived instrument. This system is built by um, Integrated Organ Technologies Incorporated out of Atlanta, Georgia, and it is, is known as the Virtuoso System and we've been using it exclusively since about 2007, I believe. Wander down the way here to the swell division. This is the largest division in the organ. Uh, again, um, sort of a standard layout. It speaks directly behind the great case, uh, out into the room uh, with the 16-foot flute base, uh, gedeck base at my back and Haskell base reeds. These are rel relatively unusual construction. The uh, silver canisters you see are the, actually the 16-foot trumpet, and it doubles back on itself using Haskell bases, H-A-S-K-E-L-L, -L. Google it, you'll find out all kinds of patents and interesting things. Um, but that's the 16-foot trumpet over on the sides, which then jumps onto the manual here for the rest of it. 
Uh, there's about 14 sets of pipes in this organ kept from the previous instrument that have been cleaned and restored, including this oboe that's right here at the, at the front, uh, all of which have worked into our new keg scheme very, very nicely. Here in the swell um, is, a, is a place to mention our wind supply system. We normally use swimmers for our manual chests, and a swimmer is a regulator that uh, is a moving plate attached to a valve that's built into the bottom of the wind chest. So instead of having a separate regulator reservoir with, uh, with bellows, etc., the swimmer uses a, a moving plate. It is much more efficient, it keeps the wind pressure much more steady, and it's much less expensive to rebuild when the time comes because there's far fewer parts in it that, that flex and, and wear. Another interesting point that I'll point out right here is how do we get into the grate to tune the principal chorus uh, that's out behind the organ case? That is the one place where it takes a little bit more uh, maneuvering to do because you have to go under the wind chest of the swell and out through a little trap door and then into that space to access the grate. Uh, we have uh, flying walk boards in this organ. Uh, we try not to do that because it's not much fun tuning on your belly reaching under, but there was no other way to get to these pipes without doing that this way. Of course, nice and stout, something that we, we try to think ahead. You notice this plate here. If you can't guess what that's for, it's so when you're crawling the ladder and you stick your foot through, you don't bend the pipes on the other side of the plate. At my feet, you'll see a bridge that goes over an airline that comes from uh, the, the main wind chest and feeds these base pipes. That's just to keep anyone from stepping and breaking that particular airline. It also gives you a nice little step up on the, on the ladder. Lighting all the way through is LED. Uh, the expression control is done with uh, motors from uh, Oregon Supply Industries in Erie, Pennsylvania. 32 stage expression uh, on, on every motor. There's actually four motors in this organ, one for the tuba, one for the swell, and one for each set of choir shades, front and side. Here you can see the backs of the facade pipes through the shades. That's always sort of a nice view. Uh, the facade pipes in the great chorus that we mentioned earlier, you have to go under the swell chest to get out to that little space. Once you're out there, there's lots of room to stand. It's a very comfortable thing to tune. We also provide a a black painted custom made tuning stick so that you can reach up and, and tune the facade pipes uh, without having to get a ladder. They're easy to tune from, from behind. Notice also in here the old zinc pipes that have new Haskell bases. If you see the, the uh, sort of satiny gray uh, tuning collars, you can see the Haskell tubes in there. We cut these pipes off and turn them into Haskell base pipes. It saves um, having to miter them and miters well, while working perfectly well make the pipe off balance and so it tends over time to try and shift and bend over because of its off balance uh, weight. So the Haskell tubes make them balanced again and there's no tonal difference between them. You cannot find where the brake is. I defy anyone to come in and tell me where the brake is. Back out into the hallway where we'll now turn and go into the old organ chamber that we have more or less abandoned. This is where the entire organ used to be located. We've added a new wall here to make a blower room so that the blower can be up in the organ and not in the basement. There are two blowers. The small blower on the left is for the high pressure running just to the tuba. The low pressure blower on the right runs the entire balance of the organ. The reservoir you see is not a static regulator, but it's actually the regulator for the horizontal pipes that are in the next room. The reservoir you just saw operates uh, these pipes here, which is the base of the pedal borden, the base of the 16-foot open wood diapason, and the bottom three notes of the choir gemsorn, which were just a little too tall to fit in the box, so they're orphaned back here in the back. Straight across here is one of the, the best parts of this organ. This organ has a, a, an E.M. Skinner style tuba on high pressure on 10 inches of wind in its very own expression box. It has its own set of shades and its own swell pedal. New set of pipes, um, very, very nicely done by AR Shop Sons in Alliance, Ohio. Uh, it's a nice, smooth, rich, powerful sound, and it's, it's really a lot of fun in this organ. Okay, so we'll back out again. you notice the wooden wind trunk at my feet. Uh, the primary wind lines in this organ are all done with wooden wind trunks. So we're gonna go back out and turn right behind the choir, and we're actually out onto the gallery rail now. where 
you can see from this angle, you can see the curves of the, of the organ case. The curve of the organ case was designed to echo the curve of the balcony rail here in, in this uh, really interesting space. When an organ builder sees a round room, sometimes you panic because you're not quite sure what it's going to do. Uh, and this room is unusual, but it's very reverberant and it's very, very friendly to bass frequencies. Uh, so the organ has a, a, a beautifully elegant and rich and engulfing sound. Now coming around the corner, now you can see the primary tonal egress for the, those pedal notes that are off there, the, the tuba in its own box. These pipes here are the treble of, the, uh, of two of the pedal stops. The organ case has the base of the third pedal stop, which is an eight foot octave, and of course a set of chimes, because that's what we have in church. Well, we are here at uh, Little Flower Church in Richmond Heights, Missouri, which is a suburb of St. Louis, with Chuck Chauvin, music director, and we have a new cake pipe organ freshly birthed onto the scene, finished it yesterday. We're going to do a little demonstration here, starting with the eight foot principle, so you can hear uh, the, the basic foundation of the instrument. Add to that the four foot octave. organ is based on a 16-foot pitch and also in this division we have a 16-foot gems horn which is borrowed from the choir division but appears on the grade at 16. of keg pipe organs is our solo diapason, which is a three rank, eight foot stop. When it's drawn, it draws in, in combination, the eight foot great principle, the four foot octave playing at eight foot, and the pedal eight foot octave playing up on the manual, giving you three eight foot stops at once. of a first open diapason. Moving on to the swell division, we will start where we always start in the swell division, with the swell strings. With the eight foot alone, This organ includes several stops from the previous Wix organ of approximately 1950. The strings and flutes predominantly, and that stop and the celeste are from the previous instrument, of course refurbished by us and brought into our tonal scheme with the celeste. There's also a four-foot salicet for a little bit more brightness. Uh, that we also have a gedect that plays at 16 and 8 foot pitch a unit, starting at 8.
that is paired with a four foot flute, open wood, also has a nice two foot piccolo. Independent Nazard and Tears for a flute cornet. Moving on to the principles, we have an eight foot Geigen diapason. For you technoids, this is a slotted stop, also from the previous instrument. It's four foot octave. Yes, there are two two-foot stops on the swell. We frequently do this, especially when there is no swell mixture, to give the swell some uh, point without having an, a mixture. The first reed is a little oboe that's also from the previous instrument. Again, worked over by us, and it's a lovely little stop. Nice blending stop, perfect for from. Next to that, we have a, a new trumpet that plays at 16, 8, and 4. Again, for you technical people, the base of this is Haskell basses. Yes, Haskell bass reeds. swell with the shades closed. Choir division, we have the del most delicate stop, the Dulciana and the Indomaros. Next we have an eight-foot concert flute. This is an interesting hybrid stop. It is half from the old organ and half new cake pipe work. The bass is stopped in the first octave, open in the second and a half octave. It goes to harmonic metal pipes new at middle G. that is not a timid stop. The gems horn and the concert flute together make an excellent bass 
to support the forfeit principle. And again, we have a two foot octave. in the choir we have a new clarinet and in the pedal we have three independent stops 16 foot open wood 16 foot Borden playing at 16 and 8 and the eight foot principal partly in facade playing at eight and four. Added to that the 16 foot trumpet which is borrowed down from the sword. foot harmonics stop which consists of a cluster of notes that impersonates a 32 foot reed not electronic real pipes as a composite stop instrument is a new eight-foot tuba based on an Ernest Skinner model circa 1928 on 10 inches of wind pressure in its own expression enclosure with its own expression pedal. is available on great and choir and is also affected by couplers so that you can make it play at 16, 8, and 4 when you want to be quite dazzling. The full organ without the tuba or four-foot couplers. that sound and add the tuba into it using the swell pedal, it's really quite grand. The system on this organ is by IOTI, Inter Integrated Organ Technologies Incorporated of Atlanta, Georgia, uh, also known as the Virtuoso System. 
Uh, the functions are primarily on accessory pistons up here that are easily accessible. There's also a control panel and a drawer for record playback functions and other miscellaneous esoteric functions uh, that you don't often uh, need to address. It is fitted with basically unlimited memory. The console is low and easy to direct over, uh, low profile. It has our signature pencil drawer, renowned in song and story. <laughs> Of course, and of course, our cup holder as well. Another interesting feature of Keg pipe organs is the um, blower start system, which consists of four pistons, which Mr. Chauvin will point out, marked one, two, three, and stop. And you enter a code on the three pistons to start the organ uh, and then stop and shut it down, of course. This provides a, an amount of security while not requiring a roll top or keys that may be lost or broken. And of course, no organ is complete without some amount of percussion bells. This organ has a 25-note Deegan set of chimes on the grate. And a five-handbell Der Zimbelster. So I hope you enjoyed the tour of the instrument. If you have any questions about what you've seen or if you have a question about something we didn't show you that we failed to include, please uh, leave your comments down in the questions. We can usually get those answered. It was great to be here to see the organ installed from beginning to end. And also I was very lucky to be here on the first mass when they used the organ for the first time. It was a rainy Saturday evening, so the crowd wasn't huge, but the organ did a fantastic job in accompanying both soloists and congregational singing.
And congratulations to Chuck Chauvin and the congregation of Little Flower for this new wonderful keg pipe organ. My thanks especially to Charles Keg and his crew for letting us document that. His crew was Philip Loxo, Philip Brown, Paul Watkins, and joining him for this installation from Atlantic City was Nick Myers and Christopher Soar from right here in St. Louis. My thanks also to Father Herzog, Chuck Chauvin, and Yuri Susovica for all of their assistance in making this video possible. Now, this video is not an endorsement of KEG over any other particular organ builder. Uh, it was just convenient that they were here in St. Louis, which made this video easy for us to produce. No financial contributions were exchanged uh, in the production of this video. Now, KEG Organ Builders is a member firm of APOBA, the Associated Pipe Organ Builders of America, and they are a sponsor of the Organ Media Foundation. I believe our missions, both of promoting the pipe organ and educating the general public, overlap enough that it is worthwhile for us to support each other, so we were happy to bring you an Apova Firm's installation in this video. Most of what we do is made possible by people just like you who enjoy watching our videos and listening to our stations, and that's the Oregon Media Foundation sponsors. In fact, I would like to thank two of our video sponsors, particularly Robert Shoring and Norudin S. Kagalawa, who were both video sponsors last year during our 2020 fundraising drive. It's 2021, and we've already started our fundraising for this year, so if you would like to become a sponsor of the Oregon Media Foundation and help us to continue to do what we do, you can do that by going to our website, organ.media, and clicking on support. Until the next time I see you, you can enjoy streaming classical organ music 24 hours a day on any of our three streaming stations, organlive.com, Positively Baroque, and The Organ Experience. Links to all of those are available on our website, organ.media. Thank you for watching. I hope you'll give us a thumbs up if you like the video, and I also hope you'll share it in social media. Show your friends what it's like to build a pipe organ from start to finish and help us spread the word about the Organ Media Foundation and what we do. Until next time, I'm Brent Johnson.